Hello everyone, I hope your 2023 has started off amazing for you. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some of the new curriculum that we are adding in this semester. If you haven't checked out my focus for the second semester of the 2022-2023 school year, be sure to check down the description so that all of these curriculum additions will make sense to you, okay? First things up, I'm going to start with my kindergartner. My kindergartner has completed a Saxon Math Level K as of the beginning of December, and we are moving on to Saxon Math 1. Yay! She's very, very excited about it. She did very well, completed that in one semester. I knew that she would go through it fairly quickly, but I wanted to give her an opportunity to go through it as to not create any gaps for her. So we will be moving on to Saxon Math 1. Next thing for her, for my kindergartner, is that she is currently doing Foundations A of Logic of English, Phonics work. She will be moving on to Foundations B in just a couple of weeks. She has pushed so hard in this and worked very well. I have seen amazing progression in her and it's something that she loves. Not just her, I love it too. That is a huge plus. When both of us are loving the curriculum and it's working for us and we just make a few little tweaks just to suit our home, it works out perfect. So we are moving on to Foundations B in a couple of weeks. Another thing that I talked about in our November update is that I was looking for a different handwriting curriculum for our daughter. She did finish off the Good and the Beautiful level K fairly quickly. She is not a big coloring person. That's not her thing. So the Good and the Beautiful does have coloring opportunities in it, but she didn't really take advantage of those. So here I am. I decided to go through my homeschool resource room what I had at home <laughs> and find handwriting resources. I knew that we had some, I just could not find them. And I was able to find tons of things that we are going to use for handwriting to give her the additional practice that she is needing, the focus that she's needing and take out a little bit of the fluff, which is something that she doesn't really care for. So I'm just gonna share with you guys just a video here. You'll be able to see all of the different resources that we're gonna be using. And we will just rotate through these probably on a daily basis. I will give her an opportunity to write letters and numbers and use the the little tracing letters that we have so she can feel their textile letters. Uh, we will also use some of Logic of English handwriting which is in her Foundations A curriculum that we did not utilize this first semester. Um, but she's gonna have tons of opportunity for handwriting and it will be just the way that she likes it without all of the extra <laughs> that she doesn't care for. But it's gonna give her the focus that she needs to really progress her handwriting. Okay, moving on to my fourth grader. As I talked about before in our main focus for 2023, we're gonna be focusing on vocabulary a little bit more and reading comprehension, inferences, things like that. So the first thing that we're gonna be using for her is going to be Evan Moore's A Word A Day. Thank you so much to the subscriber who suggested this book. I will say that it's a little bit more involvement for me because we will do more oral vocabulary, but that is what she needs. She needs to be able to hear herself and myself and we talk it out and go through it so that she can have a better understanding. And that is exactly what this A Word A Day by Evan Moore will provide for her. So we will take the time to go through A Word A Day, maybe 10 to 15 minutes a day. As I said, it's a little bit more involvement for me as opposed to what she was using for vocabulary which was wordly wise, but we are going to do it. Now, she will still continue her wordly wise. This is going to be an added change or, or change up, I guess. So she will do this for about four weeks and then she'll go back to wordly wise for four weeks and just back and forth so that she's not getting bored with it. But I will still stay involved when she does go to the wordly wise because that will become a habit that is our focus for the second semester. So I will not let up on that. Another thing that she is going to be using, and this is by the Critical Thinking Company, is the Inferences book. I picked this book up over the summer at one of the homeschool stores, and this is the perfect book for her. We're going to be talking a lot about inferences, which is something that she needs within reading passages. I also have a couple of additional resources, and I'll put a picture of them and video up here for you guys to look at, but they are just simple reading comprehension books. This will give her an opportunity to read a couple of paragraphs to answer some questions. She can make this a part of her regular routine. Now, this will be incorporated into our time where I will be listening to her read as well. This will help with her vocabulary, her reading comprehension, her inferences, context clues, all of this. This is our focus for 2023. I'm really, really excited about this for her. And I know that she will be too, because she gets to talk more with me about what she's reading and hear herself. And I know that her progression in her reading and comprehension is gonna be amazing. 
Another change that she's gonna be making, which will probably happen mid-semester, so I'm thinking maybe uh, March, maybe mid-March, is that she will be done with her Winston Grammar workbook. At the pace that she's going, um, unless it starts to progress in level of difficulty, we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated in our monthly updates. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the monthly updates. I will be coming out with one and it just kind of lets you know where we are in the progression of curriculum and life and all the things here at Life of Tillman. But I'm hoping that if it does progress in level of difficulty that she may not be done in mid-March. However, if it doesn't, she will be done. So I do have Easy Grammar Level 4. I purchased it back in the summer. It was really, really cheap at the homeschool store. I just decided to grab it just in case Winston Grammar didn't work. So far, Winston Grammar has been amazing for us. So I'm hoping that it will stretch out to the end of the school year. But if not, I have Easy Grammar in my back pocket <laughs> and I can just pull that out and she'll still get amazing grammar work and it'll be a change up for her, but she'll love it. So that's a possibility, so stay tuned and I'll keep you updated. Moving on to my fifth grader, we are embarking on a new vocabulary. She finished WordlyWise Level 4 back in October, and so I had her doing some vocabulary exercises with the words that she missed within that book from then up until now. Well, I decided to start her on a new book. Now, she does still have WordlyWise Level 5 that she has not started on yet, but I am going to be adding in for her Word Roots. Thank you to the subscriber who suggested this book. This is by The Critical Thinking Company. I love it. Love it for her. Um, this is going to be a focus and she is also going to be alternating between this book, which is the word roots and vocabulary and uh, wordly wise. She will do maybe like four weeks on, four weeks off and switch back and forth. That way they're never getting bored. Now you're probably thinking, well, she's not going to finish it before her fifth grade year is over. I don't really care. I just want them to focus on vocabulary. So if they're working on vocabulary and she's working on fifth grade vocabulary into her sixth grade year, I'm okay with that. They're getting the vocabulary. They're getting exposed to words that they probably haven't ever seen before. So it's okay. I'm fine with that. Eventually we will kind of catch up or just play around with some different books. I say catch up. There's really no catching up to happen, but play around with some different books. But I just want to add more variety into what they're learning, change it up a little bit so it doesn't become so mundane. Okay, moving on. These, this is for both of my girls, my fifth and my fourth grader. We are adding in a creative writing curriculum. Previously we were doing writing strands level one. While we loved it, it did not allow my girls to just kind of be creative with what they were writing. Very scripted and focused. I'm not saying we won't ever go back to it because I do have those books, but right now I want to try to focus on the creative writing aspect. I have one who really enjoys writing and then I have another one, not so much. So I'm hoping that with this layers of learning is what is called the writer's workshop. There are various activities that you can choose from with various levels. So while I have one who's on a little bit of a higher level when it comes to writing and one who is not, I get to choose for each of them. They get to do something that is on their level. It is fun, but yet we're all working within the same curriculum. So more to come on that, make sure you subscribe. And if you wanna check out our focus for this first semester, along with reflections of the previous school year and the year 2022, make sure you check out these videos.